<laughs> oh, finally. This was not as easy as I thought it would be. This is my new project. Remote blinds. So I had an idea that I wanted to research and it was automated blinds. And yes, there are companies out there that do this for you, but you're gonna end up paying a lot of money. I wanted to do it myself and found a way to do it with a product called Rotor Motor on um, Amazon. And it is very DIY. So this is how we're going to get let you know if you decide to do this project yourself, I'm gonna give you a realistic version of how long this might take. So here's pretty much what you'll need to start this project. One, originally I researched how to do my own motorized blinds. This product, hands down, is one of the ones that I decided to go with because it is a remote. It doesn't need electrical wiring. There are batteries in this pole and this motor and they recharge through a kit. So every, maybe once every three months, I have to plug these in and charge them back out. It has this little antenna line that connects to a remote. I would suggest if you're doing multiple windows that you buy one kit and that is a roller house 32 millimeter kit it's actually 1.25 inches and you go ahead and get the roller house 32 millimeter blind repair kit the blind repair kit comes with the brackets and this little nub here that goes on the other side of the pipe it also comes with these two brackets and something that I discovered when I did these brackets was that they didn't stick out far enough. One, because I have a very long window and that by the time these things roll up, they were getting really fat. So I had to shim something in behind them. Uh, so that was the number one problem that we ran into. If you go to Amazon and you search for a roller house, please be aware that these come in different diameters. And if you're going to do the same thing I did, you're gonna to wanna to go with the 32 millimeter. When you first search out this product, it's gonna be 22 millimeters. You're gonna go right under the picture of the product and see a little size thing and hit it to the side. And when you're on Amazon, you'll scroll over to the 32 millimeter 1.25. And you wanna to go to Lowe's. I did go to Home Depot and looked for this PVC piping because that's gonna be our curtain rod. That is actually what it's rolling up on here. Um, the reason I say go to Lowe's is because they have a scheduled pipe that is the thin wall. And I think in the rack it says like D40 or something like that. But I found the one inch and that inside of the motor actually fits quite snugly in here. I did actually end up putting a little bit of shim tape on there. I put a little electrical tape just to make it real tight when I put it in there so it didn't skip. But that actually worked out pretty good. And on that same site that you go to Amazon and you look for this product, if you look down in the customer reviews, there is a guy who did a 30 minute video on uh, the same thing. He chose this pipe. He cut, he shows you how to cut it to length. You want to measure the window. Mine measures at 32 inches. Um, and I ended up cutting the pipe three eighths of an inch longer. So these can work on an internal window, but you need to have at least three inches of depth of a recess to put these on the inside. If you don't have that, you have to put it to the outside and then you face these in that direction. 
So please be aware, if you buy this product, you're gonna want to get the, th and, and do it like I did, you're gonna wanna get the 32 millimeter. You wanna go to Lowe's and buy this 10 foot um, schedule D40, um, all here. That's pretty much what you're gonna find at Lowe's. That's the exact pipe that you're gonna wanna go with. You can buy like one pipe for like $2 and something, it's 10 feet long, so I ended up getting like three windows out of that one piece of pipe. Um, the motor itself with the kit, which comes with a charging cable and a remote control, um, that costs about $96. One remote kit and charging kit will work for the others. So I only had to buy motors for these. I didn't, I had to buy one kit and that remote ended up being able to program the other ones. I think the motor by itself, just this piece, cost about $79. And the biggest problem that I ran into was once I decided I wasn't gonna follow that other guy's video and go to Walmart, pull out a $10 blind and just use the vinyl and tear away the size. I actually wanted to find my own texture. So when I found this texture um, material, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was to keep this from telescoping or cutting it straight. I'm not a seamstress. I've never really done that before. If it wasn't for my mother-in-law, I would have been lost yesterday. She helped me with this. I would suggest you go out and get one of these boards. It's kind of like a little rubber texture here and you get yourself one of these knives and you fold the material in kind of half and you square it up with the edges and then you cut. I'm sure there's videos out there where somebody could describe how to cut a 66 inch length um, uh, material uh, way better than I can describe it. So I'll leave that research up to you. Maybe some of you already have experience with doing materials. I would say that these windows top to bottom, they measure 62 inches. At all said and done, I would do another eight inches on top of that. So two yards, 70 inches. Uh, I would just cut it right at the 70 inches. Uh, that gives you extra material to do the little drop bar at the bottom and to have enough material that actually continues to roll up around the top. Um, so that's some of the problems that I ran into is I cut the material too short or I didn't cut it or cut it too wide here to cover the window. But um, the next thing that I'll show you, I'll put the video down for a little bit, is how I ended up fixing the telescoping issue. So again, this is a very DIY project. If you look up this product and you decide, decide you wanna do it yourself, it's not, it, it's not gonna be done right away. There are gonna be mistakes made to buy yourself some <laughs> extra material, um, and maybe even an additional dowel rod, just in case those dowel rods aren't completely, you kind of want to have one that rolls nice on there. All right, I'll show you one of the problems I ran into now. All right, so this, once you have your PVC pipe cut to size, you're gonna end up taking that kit and putting this end cap on there with these two screws. These two screws are a little too long. I ended up cutting the tips off with um, I mean, they're small enough that I could just snip them off with a pair of cutters on my pliers. Um, <clears throat> see if I can get this in here while I'm still holding the camera. Probably not. All right, so that actually slides in. This piece, it just is a guide. The piece that you saw me just put up in here, that is the actual part that turns the motor. All right. And get that in there tight. Now, from the kit that I recommended that you buy with this, this comes with it. So 
You will not have this if you just purchase the motor. So, like I said, I cut these to about 38 and three inches, even though the width of the outside of my window is 32 inches. That allowed me to have this tension spring and actually put additional tension on there to hold the rod still. Again, this little piece just fits in the end of that bracket there. And you put tension on it, clicks in there. And you can kind of manually turn these up, which I already have the other ones lined up. Uh, the remote will put them all down at the same time. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get them down in the position. Now, this might look like, oh, they're coming straight down. That's what I wanted to talk about the most. This was a nightmare yesterday. First, you want to make sure that if you put a level across the top, that it is a level. Start with that. Now you'll notice that I had it a little long here. That's okay, because I wanted it to be, so I could get it to come down further. It does have an automatic stop and start position. I have not programmed these, but the reason I wanted this to come down further is so I could show you how I fixed the telescoping. If you notice, and I'll show you kind of one issue of telescoping. If you notice that as this is walking, that it starts that it starts to walk this way, you'll notice your blind start to do this as it goes higher and higher. One way to fix that telescoping is to decide that it's telescoping to roll your blind all the way down to where you just get to the pipe or the rod and on the opposite side of where it's telescoping to, take you some masking tape, tape one strip. I went ahead and taped two strips, roll it all the way back up. You'll notice that it's telescoping less. If it's still telescoping just a little bit, put another strip or two on there. What that's doing is it's fattening this side up. So it's picking this side up at the same rate that this side is. That ends up saving you so much trouble. I originally thought that I had to take the bracket off, put the bracket back on. I messed with the tension on here. Save yourself the trouble. Get this thing level. Once you have your material, you um, cut it to the size that you want. I ended up using a packing tape, and I only did packing tape on both sides, and then I rolled this up. Then, once I discovered that that was causing a telescoping issue so this wouldn't come up straight up and down, leaving that quarter inch on both sides, I discovered that I needed to come up with a way of fixing telescoping. And yes, I did find a video on YouTube that described that, and I, they saved me so much heartache. I was so much ready to give up on this project. That's pretty much how you do it. Once, once you have that tape there you're going to roll it back up to hide that and get it back up to its its length and then you'll be good to go this is not a done project yet i still have to build the valences for the top to hide the rolls but that's pretty much if you can f follow those you can pretty much do the same thing if you want but that's that's the number one issue that I came up with was trying to get all of these done. I still have to do the dowel rods for the bottom on these. Basically, I cut a dowel rod to length. I put the material up here and rolled it up square and glued it on the inside. Um, so you have a little bit of weight carrying that bottom piece down you will notice that if you haven't cut it completely square, then at the bottom, you'll kind of notice an angle. Once you have everything up square, try to square that piece up as much as possible if you have to pull the blind back down. And then you use the side of the material. Use the side of the material 
to square it up. So once you have it squared, if you have a, a piece like this, I think you could get these at like Michael's or something like that. And these are in one inch increments, but keeping the side square here allows you to see if it's square here. And then you put a little bit of glue on here, you put your dowel and then you roll it up and you don't have to worry about your dowel being all cockeyed or something like that. That was a day of experimentation yesterday. That was all day me trying to figure out how in the world I'm gonna get these things square. And if you're gonna do this DIY project, that to me is the hardest part. Yes, you could go, that, um, that link I'm gonna to provide to the other guy's video where he actually walks you through the whole process of cutting the PVC pipe, putting the motor in, putting the clamp in, measuring out your windows. That to me was the easy part. It was the mechanical part. Um, I actually ended up deciding that I would bring um, these down a little bit um, because all said and done, I didn't want these too high. So the, the biggest problem for me was putting the material on, cutting it to length, cutting it too short, um, dealing with the width and it telescoping. If, if you can follow that, where I fix the telescoping with the tape, do your best to actually take your time and cut um, your material as square as possible and you can fix minor squaring issues. I actually drew a line with a level on the pipe. I set the pipe beside a level used a marker to draw a line. That's how I line the material up. So if you run into that issue too, take you a long level, get you a marker, hold that pipe to the side and just run that marker down and you'll get a straight line on your pipe. And that will allow you to see where you need to tape your fabric to the piece. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, that's a lot. If you get through it, you get a couple of them successful, it gets easier and easier. You get used to it. Um, again, I went to joanne.com to get the material. I'll try to provide that link. I went to Amazon and uh, typed in roller house for the motor. Um, I also got the kits and everything else I bought from Lowe's. I got the dowel rod, um, I got the PVC pipe, um, one inch, and that's that's pretty much it. It, <laughs> it was a lot more work than I thought it would be, but it's worth it. The reason I wanted to do this was that we love the view of our backyard. We just moved into this house. I had, my wife wanted blinds on the back. I knew that we'd probably leave them down during the day and it would end up covering pretty much everything. Um, and I, I just wanted, I knew we would get lazy and we'd end up leaving the blinds and I wanted to be able to get up in the morning, come down, hit a button and have those blinds go up. Seemed like a great idea, it really did. But at the end of it, it was a lot more work than I thought it would be. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I still have to do the timing. I have to adjust the up position and make sure that they're all level, but we'll get there. I hope your project, if you decide to do this, <laughs> it goes a little bit easier than mine with these recommendations.